Hello and welcome to Travel Beans. This is day two of our Baranta tour and I am trying to catch everyone here some delicious fish. big fish and yeah. apparently big fish like chicken wings <laughs> as you know me I'm quite a macho man and uh, <laughs> it's quite regular that I would catch food for for everyone oh like this yeah I'm doing it wrong <laughs> Why don't I do this I'm just pulling mindlessly I'm not a natural at anything that's kind of manly if I've got to fix anything it's staying broke. <laughs> or, or I fix it. Or Emma will fix it. She's actually surprisingly good at a lot of that. I, I'm an awkward human just in general anyway, but if you put me around a group of blokes. <laughs> so my biggest fear is actually catching something because if we reel something in and they expect me to do anything with it. I don't know if you've ever caught a fish, but they just flap around like crazy. Taking the hook out is the most disgusting thing I could ever imagine. I think I would rather, and it would be horrible to watch, but let the fish flail around, die. <laughs> than take the hook out of its mouth. So things are getting serious now because I've been given some gloves. A little bit sweaty gloves. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now it's your turn. Okay, so this is all my responsibility now. <laughs> I've forgotten everything in my training. Um, I've kind of been left to my own devices now. And it looks like there's two different ways to fish. There's my way where I have to stand and just keep aimlessly pulling on this until I feel something bite. Or you've got Mustafa's over here. I know which one I prefer. <laughs> Alex failed miserably at fishing <laughs> this morning, but we have now stopped at this beautiful little cove and I would like to do my own kind of fishing, not the killing the fish variety either, the snorkeling variety. I'm going to try and spot as many little fishes as I possibly can. This might be interesting to some of you, but I've got these weird funky goggles which are specifically made for people with dodgy ears like me. I can't actually jump in the water because I can't get water on my ears because of my lack of eardrum. So this helps me be able to snorkel. It's very sexy once it's done. <laughs> oh God. So now I've got my sexy goggles on. I'm gonna take my GoPro. I'm gonna take my GoPro. <laughs> I'm gonna take my GoPro. Okay, this is not working. Why is this not working? Finally, I'm going to take my GoPro and go and do some fish hunting. So this man's just rocked up. We've got a portable ice cream man. What? Oh, this one? Oreo. Yeah, Oreo. Okay. Yeah. Sawai? I don't like the name of Noga for a sandwich. Shalom. So I managed to catch the same amount of fish as Alex. Zero. I caught no fish on camera, unfortunately, but you never know, maybe the next cove. Now it is lunchtime and we have a traditional Turkish treat to have, which is borek. And we have already had this a couple of times because there are bakeries everywhere in Turkey, which makes us very happy. And there are a range of fillings for borek. So borek is basically pastry, lots of layers of pastry with different fillings inside. So here it looks like we have a cheese borek and a spinach borek. Spinach is the one that I've tried in the shop so far, which is really great, but I've never tried one like this before. This is a bit different. It almost looks like a cake. Mm. That's quite different actually. It's a little bit more doughy. So this one is like the one I've tried before and the layers of pastry are really thin and crispy and it's mostly filling. Whereas this one, which I've not tried before, seems like mainly pastry with a bit of filling in it. Is this one borek? Yes, borek. Suburi. Is borek usually like lunch or breakfast or any specific any, any time? time. <laughs> so one of the other guests here on the boat has offered to show me how to make Turkish coffee. And the caption has informed us that generally the youngest girl has to be the coffee maker of the house. <laughs> and as I'm the youngest girl, I should be the coffee maker. Also, we were told that if you can't make coffee, then you can't get a husband. Not sure how true that is. <laughs> they actually said they were going to keep me hostage until you've learned. <laughs> until I learned how to make coffee. Well, let's see how this goes. I guess 
that's in Turkish culture, that means I actually have to marry Emma now. <laughs> now that she can finally make Turkish coffee. It's only been four years we've been engaged. <laughs> Don't try and make me feel guilty, Turkey. This is my first time trying Turkish coffee and Emma's had it pretty much every day and she likes it, so there's no fun in seeing someone try something and love it. <laughs> what you want to see is me suffer because I'm not really the biggest fan of coffee so I thought I'd review it. <laughs> so it's very hot and it's very small. I mean I, I really don't know anything about coffee so please don't get angry. <laughs> It just tastes like coffee. <laughs> I can't taste any difference between this. I don't want to say the n-word. <laughs> the Nescafe. Okay, it's a little bit like having wine. If I have a cheap wine or an expensive wine, I honestly couldn't tell the difference. And that's how I feel about this. I can confirm it is a hundred times better than Nescafe. <laughs> It's very strong. It's, I guess, the most similar thing I can compare it to is an espresso, although the taste is very different. The style of coffee tastes very different from the style of coffee I would usually have at home, but it's really good. It's really delicious. It's strong. It's tasty. If you are in Turkey, it's definitely something you should try. It looks like they're going to make a man out of me yet because the boys are taking me out for a forage. We're going to go looking for samphire, which is some green leaves, <laughs> which you use to make part of the meze. I'm too scared to take our normal camera, so I'm going to take the GoPro. So come on, guys, you're coming in here. This is why you don't bring Alex along for any manly activities because he just ruins it and I have forgotten my shoes. The only one to not think about bringing shoes while going for a forage. So now the captain is going back to embarrassingly get me some shoes and he refused to let me go along so I just have to sit here and feel guilty while he goes off and gets me some. So let us walk right into the forest To the trees and the rising sun It is something we can't outrun I do whatever it takes to hold you Whatever it takes to you Wanna be in this game for two When it all comes down Do you feel alive? I feel lost You are made to feel So far we can't find what we're looking for but we've actually bumped into some other people doing exactly the same thing who are looking for a different herb which is also a part of the mezzi. So right now what is going on is a little drug exchange. <laughs> I've just learned that this herb is called Kayakru and Kaya means rock and it, I think they're saying that it's basically a herb that grows from the rock. So the people that we've just stolen their herb from, they have already climbed down the cliff and basically foraged it from the rock. This here is what we're looking for. This is the samphire, but apparently it's not enough. So I'm not sure if we're going to take any of this. But if you come round here, there's so many little frogs. you want to please don't be polite cause i like your attitude let's forget about a curfew cause all that is stuck in my head is me and you both speed and my heart is racing but i'm not sure i wanna face it cause it only does this with you our bodies meet i can feel the tension move us into the next dimension let's just let our bodies be true It's another day and another bay with the beans. We had a wonderfully picturesque morning this morning with a beautiful Turkish breakfast to start the day. And if you'd have told me that Alex, you will be eating and loving <laughs> olives and cheese every morning, I'd have told you you're crazy, you salty mess. <laughs> <laughs> 
We had breakfast this morning in a fjord. Now, this is what the captain said, and for any of you technicality vultures out there, I don't know if it was actually a fjord. I'm just reporting what he said. It was beautiful nonetheless. Absolutely stunning. There was actually a lot of pine trees, which I didn't realize that they had here in Turkey, lining the coast. So it's about midday now. We've <laughs> Don't judge me. <laughs> we've just pulled into this bay that we've got entirely to ourselves. No other boats here. And that water, that turquoise blue water is calling to me. I'm a bit addicted to jumping in at the moment and this is a little shout out to one of our patrons Dan Donahue because I know how much he loves YouTubers and them jumping off anything they can find. Oh. And what's happened? I am being stung by a jellyfish. I don't know what to do, but I'm gonna go ask if they have anything. Can I pee on you? No! Please! <laughs> no! Why do I always get stung by jellyfish? That's it, what we're gonna put on it, but they have a good old chat about it first. <laughs> Have no fear guys, I have fully recovered. The guys on the boat were wonderful. They helped put some things on my jellyfish burn and now it's basically completely disappeared. And don't worry, it's not put me off going in that beautiful blue water. I will be jumping in ASAP. Make sure to go and check out Barantha Yachting. We will leave a link in the description below. Thanks for watching the video. If you enjoyed it, give it a big thumbs up and leave us a comment. And if you've got this far, how have you not subscribed? I'm embarrassed. <laughs> for you <laughs> and finally there's nothing left to say apart from to get serious this is the moment you've all been waiting for thanks very much for watching and be down so I'm gonna take this dinghy back to the boat but I tried to use this yesterday and if that was anything to go by I'm gonna be a while Oh shit! Sit down, sit down! The boat's that way. <laughs> <laughs>